in today's video, let's create a jigsaw effect and blend a second image as if it was part of another jigsaw puzzle. The first thing we need is a jigsaw pattern. The easiest way to create a jigsaw pattern is using a free online tool. Let me switch to my browser where the website is already loaded. The link to this website will be in the description. This is a pretty cool tool and has quite a bit of customization options. You can change the tab size, change the dimensions and the number of tiles. After you're done configuring and setting the desired jigsaw pattern, simply click on the download SVG button. This will save the SVG file to your local computer's download folder. We can now easily import this file into Affinity Photo. So here is the imported file in Affinity. As you can see, this is an embedded document. So when I double click on it, Affinity will open up a new tab with the embedded document. And as you can see, it is made of curves where the horizontal lines are in blue and the vertical lines in red. Together, they make up the jigsaw pattern. If needed, we can make the changes here but I will just close this embedded document and use this as is. Back in the main document, I will enable the image to which we want the jigsaw effect to be applied to. Let's also enable the jigsaw layer on top and we already have a pretty decent effect. But when we zoom in, we can see the red and the blue color for the jigsaw pattern and it looks super flat. First thing we need to do is to get rid of the color. An easy way of getting rid of colors is by using an HSL adjustment. Let's add an HSL adjustment from the adjustments in the layers panel. The intensity or the strength of the color is called the saturation. So to remove the colors we just need to lower the saturation to zero. The HSL adjustment we just added was added on top of the layer stack with as a result that all the colors are gone in the document. We only want it to be applied to the jigsaw layer. To do that, I can drag and drop the HSL adjustment as a child of the jigsaw layer. Child layers are always clipped to the parent layer. This is why the HSL adjustment is now only being applied to the jigsaw pattern. Finally, before moving on, let's set its blend mode to multiply. This will make the jigsaw pattern darker on the image. Awesome! This looks already much better. The next step is to make the jigsaw effect a bit more realistic by giving it a shine and depth. To achieve that, I'm going to duplicate the jigsaw layer. In this duplicate, I want to make the pattern white. We can use the existing HSL adjustment for this. In the HSL adjustment, let's increase the lightness to max value and the jigsaw will now become white. When I temporarily change the blend mode to normal, you can see it is white. Let's set it back to multiply. White is a neutral color in the multiply blend mode, meaning it has no effect. This is why the white jigsaw pattern is not showing up. I can now add effects to this layer without the actual jigsaw tiles being shown. Let's click on the effect button in the layers panel to open up the effects dialog for this layer. The first effect I'm going to apply is the bevel and emboss effect. Let's enable it and set its type to pillow and increase the radius to about one pixel. Keep in mind that the values I'm using works well for this image. But if you have a bigger or smaller image, the values need to be adjusted accordingly. I will also change the direction and as you can see the jigsaw pattern comes back slowly. The next effect is the outer glow effect. Let's give it a quite a big radius and then lower the intensity to about 10%. The final effect we're going to add will be the outer shadow. Let's adjust the radius, the offset and the intensity until we have a nice effect where the jigsaw elements look good. Perfect. Let's close the effect dialog and turn this layer off to see the difference. 
As you see, this layer adds this 3D shiny effect to it. Let's now turn on the lower layer, which will act as the border to the jigsaw tiles. With this layer turned on, we can go back to the upper layer and fine tune its layer effects, especially the outer glow. I feel like lowering its opacity looks much better. Awesome! Let's navigate around the document and see how the effect works on lighter areas. This area, for example, still looks a bit too flat, so let me add an effect to the lower jigsaw layer. I'm going to add a bevel and emboss effect for this layer too. For the type, I will select emboss this time, and by increasing the radius, we do get a more realistic effect. Excellent! And our jigsaw effect is done. Pretty awesome! If needed, we can adjust the opacity of these two layers, especially on the lower jigsaw layer. Pretty cool! As promised, let's blend this jigsaw with a second jigsaw. I will paste the second image. To position this image, I'm going to temporarily lower its opacity. By lowering the opacity, I can see both images and this allows me to set up a nice composition. Once I'm happy with the composition, I will reset the opacity back to 100% and add a mask to the second image. I'm going to roughly mask out the left part of this image by painting with black on the mask. The idea is that the second image is blended in as a jigsaw. So, first, I'm going to lower the image below the two jigsaw layers. I will now need to decide which tiles to keep from this image. For this, I'm going to make a copy of the top jigsaw layer and remove the effects from it. I will also adjust the HSL so the jigsaw lines are black. This will be our base for our mask. Before continuing, I will rasterize it so I can use it with the fill tool. Let's select the fill tool and fill the tiles, which will be part of the second image. Notice that the fill doesn't work as expected. This is because it is set to current layer and below. Let's switch that to current layer and make sure our rasterized jigsaw layer is selected in the layers panel. Perfect! I can now fill the border tiles which I want to keep. Let's make sure we have the tiles selected from the top to the bottom. To make the masking a bit easier in a minute, I'm going to add a second column of tiles. This has given us some slack space, so I can now use a white brush to add even more extra space. Let's turn off all the other layers, and this is what we have right now. I want a selection of the white areas, so with the help of the flood select tool, I will select the white area. We now have a nice clear selection of the border area we want to keep. Let's go back to the mask of the second image and select it. I can now invert the current selection we just created by using the Select menu. By inverting, everything outside the white area is now selected. If I now paint with black in the mask, the black will only be painted on the selection, which is exactly the area we want to remove from this layer. Awesome! We now have a nice mask matching with the jigsaw tiles. Let me temporarily turn off the jigsaw layer so I have a better view, and as you might have noticed, I forgot to mask some areas. Let's quickly fix those. When I turn off the top image, this was our original jigsaw image. And here is our jigsaw blended image. Pretty cool, isn't it? I hope you liked this video, and thanks again for watching.